From rooftop gardens to Egyptian mummies, the legacy of this Manhattan house is fit for a Hollywood movie. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. Today we are exploring the mansion of George Gold. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of this house. George J. Gold was born into money. He was the son of Jay Gold, one of the most despised barons of industry. He opted not to receive an education, but to chase love interest instead. While attending a play, he saw the actress Edith Mary Kingdon. She was widely regarded as one of the most talented and beautiful actresses in the country. For George, this was love at first sight. He was quick to introduce himself, and in no time, the two were married at the Gold's country home, Lyndhurst. Edith moved into George's Victorian mansion at the corner of 5th Avenue and 67th Street in Manhattan, but the young couple found the 15-year-old home to be outdated and claustrophobic, with its 50-plus small rooms. A few short years later, in 1892, Jay Gold passed away, leaving his railroad empire to George. With full control of his inherited wealth, George had his mansion torn down and hired architect Horace Trumbauer to design a modern palace with an open floor plan. The house would be fashioned in the Beaux-Arts style, rising five stories above ground and descending two stories below grade. Four stories of the facade were clad in limestone, with two faces of the house planned for symmetry. The fifth floor, concealed by a mansard roof, was perched above the heavily ornamented stone cornice. Entering the home between a pair of bronze doors, you would cross into the foyer. The entire space was clad in marble, from floor tiles to the marble wall blocks to the 50-foot-long marble staircase. The first floor, containing 5,130 square feet, was composed of only three main rooms. To one side of the foyer was the dining room, finished with painted wood paneling and set with carved marble reliefs set above the French doors. To the other side of the stair hall was the reception room. True to the period of gilded glamour, with old-growth walnut panels which had been imported from Europe, cladding the walls with Louis XVI furnishings and antiques decorating the space. The next floor, also composed of three main rooms, contained a grand stair hall clad in marble with a bronze skylight set above the stairs. Set on one side of the stair hall was the entrance to the ballroom. Unlike ballrooms of its time, it was not gilted with gold leaf, but was instead painted white and gray, fitting of the design trends that would follow in the late 2000s, nearly 100 years ahead of its time. Sitting opposite the ballroom was the drawing room with parquet floors and painted wall panels to match the ballroom. It was furnished with Louis XVI antiques and proudly displayed antique tapestries on either side of the fireplace. Continuing to the third floor, you would find four guest suites along with the Gold's bedrooms. Mr. Gold's bedroom contained wooded coffered ceilings with plaster insets and was furnished in dark heavy woods. The large stone fireplace was decorated with relief work depicting a scene from antiquity. Mrs. Gold's room, in stark contrast, had white wall paneling and a carpeted floor. All the fabrics and upholstery were light colors with floral patterns mimicking the floral motif found along the frieze. Adjoining the two bedrooms was a sitting room. The fourth floor housed seven bedrooms for the couple's children, along with a private dining room for the family. The fifth floor and basement levels were reserved for the servants and included groundbreaking technology such as elevators, built-in refrigerators, built-in vacuums, and electric irons. The house was perfect, a spectacle of class and modern convenience, the envy of the neighborhood. But the Gold's romantic relationship was nothing to envy. George had met a young woman by the name of Guinevere, who was 20 years younger than he was. By 1921, George and his mistress were raising their two children outside of the house. Edith found out about this relationship and quickly began working out, thinking if she could lose weight and appear younger, perhaps she could win the favor of George again. She began wearing constricting rubber suits under her clothing to create the illusion that she was thinner than she was. On a particularly hot day, she was wearing this rubber suit under her golf clothes and collapsed on the green, presumably dying of a heat stroke. Wasting no time, George and Guinevere were married six short months later, but society was judging George for not grieving his wife. Not wanting to deal with the social repercussions, George and Guinevere set off to Europe to enjoy a private honeymoon. While in Europe, news broke of a major discovery in Egypt. Tutankhamun's tomb had been discovered. George arranged to see the tomb in person, joining the archaeologist on site. But something would go horribly wrong. The people who had entered the tomb became mysteriously ill and started dying one by one. George had entered the tomb. He was taken to France where he would die under the care of the world's top physicians. 
The house in Manhattan sat empty until Harry Whitney purchased it for $800,000, or the modern-day equivalent of about $13 million. Alice Vanderbilt moved into this house while she attempted to find a buyer for her massive chateau. Upon the sale of the chateau, Alice paid back her son-in-law, Harry Whitney, the $800,000 he had paid for the house. The Goulds house was later inherited by Alice's youngest daughter, Gladys, who sold the home in 1951 for $400,000, or the modern-day equivalent of about $4.5 million. In 1962, it was sold to developers, who tore down the house to replace it with a 19-story building. The house might be gone, but we still have pictures to remember it by. Which room was your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. I'd also like to take a moment to say thank you to our This House supporters whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on this screen, please consider joining our membership program today. I'll see you next time on This House.